the art of sleep and the art of silence are internet-based works and you access them using QR codes. So once you scan the QR code, it brings you to the artwork page on the website and from there you launch the artwork. The work is, is a web page that you start and it fills your screen and what you see is a series of sentences, black text on white background that move or change according to the rhythm of the music that is playing. These works were originally created as web-based experiences. So for us to be showing them within the walls of the gallery is, is an odd thing and it raises a huge number of questions which we have worked through you know, in dialogue with the artists. They would like to create an opportunity for people to use the QR codes to leave the gallery and to move into an online space. So the museum is one place where NetArt lives, but NetArt really lives on the web. It lives in the internet and through that it encounters its audience wherever you encounter the internet. NetArt is made with software and it is made often in a browser and so it is dependent upon the protocols and the structures of that browser to function. While a painting conservator might look at a painting and think, what is the paint that is being used? Was it applied with a brush or a spatula? When I look at a net-based artwork, I immediately go into the code of that page and try to understand how was this programmed, what kind of behaviors, and what kind of images are being used. So any work that is acquired into the collection, we have what we call the acquisition process, where we do a risk assessment of the technologies being used, and we plan for the future of the work. What we knew is that it had been created with Flash. Flash stopped being supported at the end of 2020. And so the artists were very aware that they couldn't maintain this format for their pieces. We had conversations over two years to make sure we found the, the right solution. For them, accessibility was very important from the beginning. So the solution was to transfer the Flash animations into video format. The Art of Sleep and the Art of Silence were commissioned by Tate and exhibited on Tate's website and they have since been acquired into Tate's collection. Some of the early networks that supported net art were founded by artists. Mark Garrett and Ruth Catlow founded Further Field in 1996, which was an early community-oriented space. Other organisations such as Artec and Innova, the International Institute for Visual Arts, with Gary Stewart, also commissioned net-based art. Furtherfield grew up with net art. So we started in the mid-90s, really as the web was becoming a place that anyone could publish to when the web was young. Net art arrives at a time when we have this new global communication system with unprecedented levels of speed and connectivity. And artists are using it really as kind of subversive medium and as a medium for expression and just reaching people in new ways. I think different people have their own versions of NetUp. The networks were kind of essential. NetUp came from the idea that if you're immaterial, then you're not bogged down by kind of institutional control. And it's because it's the first time we could explore our artistic identity beyond the traditional art world. The X space was conceived of as a virtual gallery by the Institute of International Visual Arts, Geneva, in 1996. This new kind of space in terms of a, a virtual space afforded a different way of working in terms of the commissioning practice at that time was really favourably received by the artists because it afforded this, this new opportunity to make work in a way that they hadn't prior to that. And there was particular excitement about the holy grail of being able to distribute your work. So in the late 90s, both arts organisations, smaller ones led by artists, as well as large museums began to commission net art. And they often wanted to get involved in the work to show their engagement with the digital landscape, with the emerging field of the web browser, but also to show that work as part of their visual arts programs within the galleries. That resulted in issues around how you frame the work, how do you contextualize it? Does it just sit on your website as a kind of extra site? Mm -hmm. 
The Tate Net Up Commissions are a wonderfully strange moment in history. I guess what I really liked about those works, the importance of putting net art into an institutional context and giving it a platform, is that it actually gives us a way for artists to be the canary in the cage about what's happening with our social technologies. Graham Harwood made a doppelganger, basically, of the Tate website. So people were basically ported into this very strong critique of arts institutional culture. Susan Collins' Tate in Space is playing with all the, what we now understand as the kind of fake truth problem. She pushed the fiction to the point where people really didn't know what was going on. A lot of people chose to believe. It was quite interesting, but also at times quite disturbing. I was very clear at the time that I wanted it to be a kind of fiction that was born out of reality. And I worked out that if you're doing something in space, well, you need a satellite, you need to put something out there. So it's sort of scoping how Tate in space might work. Well, and if you've got a satellite, maybe you need a webcam on it. We also had a competition for architects. A piece like that is of its time. Even though Tate in space still is kind of online in the archival bit of the Tate website, it's not fully functional in the way that it was. So the only way really to represent it is to present it as a kind of document, if you like. So the Tate Net Art Commissions were really part of a time when the website was considered a fifth gallery after Liverpool, St Ives, Tate Britain and Tate Modern. And the fifth gallery appeared on the front page of the Tate website as another location you could visit to see net art. As curator Christiana Paul has noted, net art should flow in and through the institution, that in fact there should be no one model for presenting networked art, it should be case by case, and it should flow beneath and around the institution. She says that museums and galleries are just one context for showing net art. I do think that when Young Hei Chang Heavy Industries first created these works, they felt that the most appropriate place for them was online and that at that point in time it would not have been a strong decision on their part to enter into the institution. But you know, a lot of time has passed since then and I think that they have reimagined these works and are now wondering whether the thoughts, the conversations that they would provoke as a result of people experiencing them within the gallery, whether there's value in that. My initial concern for the preservation of net art was how to provide access and how to ensure that people could still visit an artwork that was using obsolete technologies. I've become more relaxed about that. The technologies are there and people are working to develop them. There's a, a brilliant community in the digital preservation world doing just that. As a time-based media conservator, what became apparently very quickly at the beginning of my career is that artists are always using new technologies and they're always experimenting with new technologies and that that eventually will come into the museum. 